Hi, my name is Haley, and today I'm going to tell you about one of the most amazing processes in our body. It's called meiosis. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Haley, learning about meiosis is for chumps. I'm not a chump. Of course you're not. And guess what? Neither am I. <laughs> you like learning about things with purpose and value, right? Well, I'm happy to say that meiosis has plenty of purpose and a, f a fair amount of value. Overall, it's a very non-chumpy thing to learn about. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> so here's the skinny. The purpose of meiosis <clears throat> is to divide diploid cells into haploid cells for sexual reproduction. Meiosis has two divisions, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Now during meiosis 1, the diploid cell divides into two haploid daughter cells. Then, meiosis 2 is where those two daughter haploid cells are divided into four daughter cells. So, to illustrate this, here is a picture of four very, very good looking bunnies. <laughs> they all represent the four daughter cells that are created from meiosis. They are all very cute. <laughs> I think I mentioned that already. But anyways, to begin our meiosis journey, we will start at meiosis 1. Meiosis 1 has an interphase stage similar to mitosis, which includes the G1, S, and G2 phases. Following interphase is prophase. During prophase, the nuclear membrane begins to break down, and the spindle of microtubules begin to form on the opposite ends of the cell. The pairs of chromatids will attach to the spindle microtubules at the centimeter, and that's prophase. And after, you can see a demonstration of prophase that I have put together using some very, very, very creative household items, if I do say so myself. You will see a little demonstration of every phase after I'm done explaining them. During metaphase, microtubules form a spindle, and the spindle fibers attach to the centromeres of the chromosomes, and the pairs of the homologous chromosomes align across the equator. The crossing over of genetic material, while it does occur during late prophase, it also occurs during early metaphase. Crossing over is basically the homologous pairs of chromosomes exchanging their genetic information. During anaphase, the homologous pairs are separated, and one chromosome of each pair moves to each pole. In telophase 1, a nuclear membrane forms around the chromosomes at each pole, and the chromosomes uncoil. The cell then undergoes cytokinesis to form two daughter cells, which are also known as haploid cells. An important thing to remember about telophase 1 is that the DNA isn't replicated and that the cells may enter a short interphase period or they may proceed directly to meiosis 2 after telophase 1. Now we move on to meiosis 2. The second process of meiosis starts off with the two haploid daughter cells that were created in meiosis 1. Meiosis II involves the separation of the sister chromatids and looks very much like mitosis. In prophase II, the chromosomes, which so consist of two chromatids, condense and become visible. And if needed, the nuclear membrane and the nuclei break up while the spindle network appears and the chromosomes begin migrating the equator. During metaphase 2, spindle fibers attach to the centromeres, and the chromosomes align along the equator. During anaphase 2, the spindle fibers shorten, and the centromeres separate, and the chromatids are moved to opposite poles. And finally, during telophase 2, 
Nuclear, a nuclear membrane forms around the chromatids at each pole, and once the membrane is formed, each chromatid is then called a chromosome, and both cells undergo cytokinesis to form four daughter cells. The chromosomes eventually uncoil, and the nuclei form. So there you have it. There is the wonderful and non-chumpy process of meiosis. I hope you enjoyed my video, and you have a groovy day.